Everyone is all about DIY, but can you really do your own home's electric? In many cases you can, and here's how we did it without paying an electrician a single dime and passing all of our inspections. Remodeling and home building are really popular right now, but with high cost, scheduling issues, uh, everyone's looking to do it themselves. Slowly, we've been building our home, our 1900 square foot home in East Tennessee. We're gonna walk you through the process of just how we installed our electric. The first step is to stop uh, and just let you know that every county, state, um, rules and regulations are a little bit different in regards to um, your electrical code. Most will reference the NEC National Electric Code, uh, depending on which year it is. Um, you'll just have to check your county guidelines uh, and always use a licensed electrician when doing this type of work. And our first step was to get a, a temporary pole so we could run tools, run our camper. Uh, and this is exactly what it sounds like. It's temporary. It's not made to be there permanently. You can check out another video that we made on uh, failing and passing our inspection for the temporary pole. So a few inspections that we had to do along the way, the first one being our service entrance conduit. So we had to run conduit from our transformer to our meter base on the outside of our house. And that had to be inspected by the company that supplies our electricity. Once inspected, we were able to backfill it and get it ready to run the service entrance cable. Alongside that inspection, we could go ahead and get our rough inspection. This is the inspection where the Inspector's looking at all your wiring, what gauge wiring, all your, your nailing systems, your staples, um, the holes that the wires are going through, um, things like that. He's looking at your panel and how you've got your wires ran, breakers, things like that. Uh, and this is obviously done before sheetrock. He has to be able to see the wires. Once we got the AOK -okay on the roughing inspection, uh, we proceeded to put sheetrock up and then um, go ahead and install outlets, switches, uh, cover plates, lights, um, fixtures, things like that in preparation for the final inspection. After we started wiring plugs and switches, we made sure to get at least one GFI protected outlet ran first. And then we called for our service release inspection in which the inspector would come out, verify that we have a GFI protected outlet, and then he would give us a little fancy sticker and we could call the electric company and have them actually run the service entrance cable to our meter, which would energize the entire house. Also along the way, we had to get our air conditioner heater inspected and the wiring that goes to the main unit. The final inspection is when everything's buttoned up, we called the inspector out here and he went around checking our grounds, our GFCI faults, looked at our panel again and some different things and gave us the all clear, gave us our final inspection and we were good to go. And a, a brief breakdown of our electrical system, we have uh, one 400 amp service uh, to our, our meter base on the side of our house and that splits into two disconnects. Um, each of the disconnects feeds to a, uh, a panel, one main panel for the first floor and, and another panel for the second floor. We want to make sure we had plenty of panel space to add on uh, you know, future rooms upstairs and things like that. We went ahead and trenched in a conduit and ran a wire to our shed and installed a sub panel so the shed has complete power now. The well is powered off that sub panel in the shed so everything now is completely off the temporary pole so once we sell the camper, uh, we can uninstall that. So a lot of people kind of get scared um, when you talk uh, code, code compliance, uh, especially with things with electrical. And what we did was we, we bought this little cheat sheet that really broke it down and gave plenty of diagrams of the different NEC codes, but it just shows you what it's talking about as far as how you run your wire, what gauge wire to use for appliances, how you set up your electrical panel, uh, how you do your meter, how you do your servants entrance, things like that. Don't get me wrong, there's still specific rules and regulations that your county will enforce that might be outside of that book but that will get you really really close um, so we referenced that book along with we, we talked with so many people friends of ours that were either electricians at one point or a lineman or someone else building that's a slightly ahead of us that already got their inspections and we just we had people come out and ins and do private inspections to see how we were doing um, really to give us the confidence that um, what we installed would be uh, correct and safe. Really appreciate you guys watching. I hope this helped you out. Uh, please hit us up with any comments or questions below. Take care.